Yeah. Number six, our second to the last question before our big one. Um, sixth question is: Woo-hoo. This is for the people who are not that much into basketball history as we are, or you know, the younger generation. How good were the Cleveland Cavaliers of the late '80s and early '90s? Because um, a lot of people, they're like, you know, some people kind of diminish what the Bulls did. They beat a really good team. Like that's why it went to a deciding shot because that was a really good team they had there. And in the documentary, it did they did show that the Cleveland Cavaliers swept the season series in the regular season against mm-hmm. the Bulls. So. I- Carl, how good were they? <laughs> to um to piggyback piggyback on your point, Mike MJ did say it. he said it himself. Back in the 80s and 90s, you had to play your division rivals, division rivals six times. He said it himself. They were six and zero. Oh. That's why no one picked them. Even the the Chicago writers, sports writers, no one picked them. Even like the one pointed out by Sam Smith, one writer pointed the Cavs to sweep, one pointed the Cavs to win in four, and one pointed the Cavs in five. And we all know what MJ said to them: "I took care of you, I took care of you, and I'll take care of you today." That's what he said. That's because it speaks to the level of great greatness and how good the team was. And for those watching, you can Google, uh, you can YouTube uh, some. Clips from NBA TV called Open Court. There's oh, some, yes. uh-huh. there's some random episodes there, but there was an episode there uh, titled "Decades," where mm-hmm. Isaiah Thomas was asked who was some of the underappreciated, underrated point guards, and one of them he said was Mark Price, the floor mm-hmm. general. The 50, 40, 90. The Mark 50, Price. 40, 90 before it mm-hmm. became natural. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He said it himself. There was a stretch where Mark Price looked like he was going to be the leader and take this team to the promised land. Another slept on guy from the Cavs is actually one of the last dance members, oh, Ron yeah. Harper. Mm-hmm. People may have a recency bias and remember Ron Harper as a defensive wing, defensive guard for both the Lakers and the Bulls. But before he went to the Lakers and the Bulls, he was. He was a 25 and 5 guy that just got hampered by injuries. That's why the Bulls picked him in 93 because they needed to offset to offset MJ's 30 points off the window. Not that they don't have trust in Scotty and Tony Ku coach, but 30 points is still 30 points. That's what they took a chance on him. Even in uh, Ron Harper's time with the Clippers. Um, Mm, yeah, yes. still have a good twenty-four and four. So Ron Harper was a uh, was a beast. Sadly enough, just injuries took in. Yep. But if he injured, could have been a perennial All Star. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go with their big guy, Brad Doherty, former oh, number one super, pick. Super underrated, like super, super underrated. underrated. Super underrated. Once again, this speaks to the existence of how deep the East was. You know, I mean he just kind of got overshadowed because you still had Kevin McHale. Kevin McHale was a downright beast. But mm. Chris Doherty wasn't that, wasn't that far off because, you know, he had he had the post moves. He had a little bit of a mid-range jumper. He was a pretty complete power forward center for that time. Especially at the time where if you had a mid-range game, you would be a matchup nightmare because all of those centers in the 90s, 80s and 90s, they rarely had perimeter jumpers. Well, Sam Perkins was an exception. He was Sam a, Perkins mm-hmm. was one of the uh, original stretch fives. Mm-hmm. Then you had Rick Smiths come in. Yep. Uh, Brian Reeves had a stretch where he was shooting perimeter jumpers. So at the time, you were going to be a matchup nightmare because that face of game, especially yeah. in the, especially with pick and rolls beginning to be more widely implemented yeah. in systems. If the guards or the bigs would lead their, their, the guys they're guarding or basically the ball handles to the rim, a good a good setup pass would yeah. get your rope and take the jumper. Yep. And you know, yeah. I mean, the, the mid-range jumper was pretty much, it revolutionized everything because it really put 
the bigs in a tough position because mm-hmm. you know you don't wanna you didn't wanna challenge Hakim like that you didn't wanna challenge Mark Eaton like that you know mm-hmm. because Hakim Mark Eaton and then Motombo and Ewing coming uh, there if you try to attempt it even if whoever you are at some point then you're gonna get blocked unless you do what Jordan and Pippen and the others did and just if you see Ewing then you just Sorry, Patrick Stop Ewing. It. We love you. <laughs> we, love, we respect you, but... <laughs> bro, that's my point. Uh, mm-hmm. Not all could dunk, not all could jump like that. So, they had to yeah. find a niche. Yeah. And since... And at the time, this was more of the cross matchups. So, now, yeah. these bigs are more... The, the old school, the real old school ones were back to the basket, face-up game. Now, you stretch them out. Every, mm-hmm. It creates so much... So much space. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the thing with Hakim was, he could kill you with the jump shot, he could kill you in the post, and he was yep. that dream shape. Yes. Woo! Woo! Sweet. <laughs> Nothing sweeter. And um, actually, this guy gets a lot of flack for, you know, being the guy MJ always tortured, but Greg Elo wasn't a scrub. He, he was a he legit was, starting to so, guard in on a playoff team. Like the only thing he couldn't do was jump. So I get Ron Harper's was, frustrations in the documentary. That you know, your coach. He wants to fight MJ. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But you also had other players like Larry Nance Senior. I mean, if you think Larry Nance Junior has hops, you should have seen Ooh, Larry Nance Senior. Larry Nance Senior was one of the first people I've, I think, ever did that, where he would do the off cradle. one leg, one foot, cradle 360. Yeah, cradle. One thing with Larry Nance Senior was he also had the balanced offensive game. Yeah, he had a jumper. He could, he could score. Larry Nance Junior is more of the new school, old school mix where you have you yeah. can he could score, but he can also be a yep. rebounder. He could also pass from the high post and is a really good blocker and. He may not be the same level of an athlete his dad was, but he's quite the athlete. I think uh, the dunk on Brook Lopez and <laughs> yep. Kevin Durant. Mm-hmm. That's enough and too. Another name I'd like to throw at you is their designated tough guy in Cleveland. Ooh. Hot Rod. Hot Rod oh, Williams. Hot Rod <laughs> Williams. Yes, Hot Rod Williams, Rod. the guy who, you know, he knew his role and he knew how to weight train. So he looked like a chiseled brick house of a man, you know. In, he really was, was the tough perfect, guy. Perfect in the 80s and 90s when you needed the banger. Mm-hmm. Also, another guy off that bench, but I don't know if he played that long there. Uh, former number two overall pick, former Spurs and Hawks, former Spurs and Hawks GM, Danny Ferry. Oh yeah, he did. He did. The, this um, team was just like epically deep. <laughs> just people forget, and they also at one point had Steve Kerr, who <laughs> just kind yeah. of. Funny, you know. How the weird thing some people in the how some people in the Cavs just ended up on the Bulls, like a long time after. The weird, the the painful thing with this team was, they were deep, but they never had that one or two guy at oh, yeah. that position. Mm-hmm. Because when you said point guards, yes, Mark Price is arguably top five yeah. during the time, but it wasn't. They didn't magic. have the. They didn't have the number one. I mean, uh, Stockton, it wasn't those guys. Then when you play two guards, you have Ron Harper, who at the time was ascending to be a top five guy. You had Craig Edo, but it wasn't Michael, it wasn't Dumars. It wasn't Drexler. It wasn't Drexler. It wasn't, it wasn't even, I know. It wasn't even the tail end of Sidney Moncrief. Shout out to Sidney Moncrief. Sidney Moncrief, former Defensive Player of the Year. Yep. In mid 80s. Gotta give people some respect. Put some respect on that man's name. I forgot what episode it was when he was interviewed for the last dance. And uh, mm. MJ that, killed him. Like, that's when you know <laughs> MJ was legit. Because at the time, Sidney Moncrief was the best, the absolute best wing defender. Not just that, reigning defensive yep. player of the year. Mm-hmm. And a rookie just went out and said, Okay, I got this. So I guess, to the level of greatness. Yeah. So I guess for all the young kids out there, and the people who don't know how to search on the internet, please make sure you respect 
the late 80s and early 90s Cavs for who they were, they just oh, you kept do. running into Michael Jordan. That's that's pretty much it. This was a very deep team. They they won a lot of games. They had the legendary Lenny Wilkins as their coach. The they second, were really good. The second were... winningest coach in NBA history, Lenny Wilkins. They were really good. It was just that, as I mentioned, there wasn't that clear cut yeah. big start. Because, yes, you want to say, oh, the Celtics have three. The, the, the Lakers had one, two. The Bulls had Michael and Scotty. The part of the, the problem was those yeah. stars yeah. were just all time greats. And these are all time greats as well. It was more of when a, go, when a push comes to shove. Mm-hmm. There was no clear cut one guy to dominate for these guys. I'm not sure if you watch um, Fox Sports, but um, just to borrow something from Nick, right? All the Cavs star players were very good, but they weren't in the A tier. Exactly. Were, none of them were they in were the A tier. The yeah. If I would say an argument, if Ron Harper was healthy, things could have been different. Yeah. They definitely if, could. Mm-hmm. If he was a legit 25 and 5 scorer. And Michael Jordan said it himself during episode 3. The yeah. dude that gave me a hard time during that time was Ron Harper. Mm-hmm. That speaks to existence of how good Ron Harper was as like a second or third year player in the league. It was just mm-hmm. sad that it was yep. it just not it was just a regret that he wasn't being able to he wasn't healthy. Hmm. So that he could have reached his peak more, but I think we saw enough evidence to say if he was healthy, he could have been a big problem. Yep. Especially, especially it was the time of the it was the introduction of the combo guards, the hmm. ones and twos yeah, yeah. who could kill people, and yep. he was one of those guys. Just really bad if he just couldn't have played his prime healthier. Yeah, and you know. Um, if it's any consolation to the Cleveland fans, the longtime Cleveland fans, at least another 23 gave you a championship. So you, you gotta throw them a bone for that one. But your you hometown got their yep. hometown here got them one. Yeah. And so there we conclude the second to the last question. 